guys. This is the crowd. Crowd, this is this is Hello, them. crowd. Happy New Year, crowd. We love you, crowd. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to just kind of get going here. We, we got a little off to a little bit of a late start, so we're just going to hit the ground Sorry running. No, 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 no. Um, so first question, getting started. Okay. What led to your career in voice acting? How did you go from, you know, wanting to be on stage or screen, or was, was voice acting always sort of what you wanted to, to do as, as a career, at least as far as this panel is concerned, because I know you've all done other things, yeah. but in, in regards to this, what made you think, oh, hey, I want to do voice acting? <coughs> you want uh, well, I, you know, I, I, I put it this way. I just enjoy uh, acting. I started in theater in, uh, uh, in high school doing stamp comedy because I made my parents laugh with mm -hmm. it. And I just uh, had started doing impersonations and it got me to do high school in theater, which led me to uh, audition. Uh, I got a, a partial scholarship to my community college, which led to a full scholarship, University of South Carolina. I studied in theater, I took classes, did plays. And I just, I just loved it. And eventually, I moved out to Los Angeles, summer of 2004, and I started up, you know, having kind of start over again, but doing student film, taking improv classes, uh, doing casting director workshops. I did this the gamut of things, but uh, I, I went to the when I got the audition uh, for Red Dead Redemption. I even know what I was auditioning for, to be honest. Uh, I was just. Any audition is an opportunity for an actor to act. And so I went there, I was coming from another gig I had booked, and uh, I just, I was just, I gave them what they wanted, and it, it, was, a, it was a great experience. Awesome. And from that, I've certainly, I've done more uh, voiceover specific work. Um, and it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. I, I would just say for me, I personally don't categorize, uh, even though the industry will do it, to me, it's just all acting. Work and, is work. And I, I, exactly, and I love every aspect of it. Penny, how did you get introduced into the world of voice acting? Um, I kind of went the same route as him. I went to school for drama, and I was doing acting, and I um, kind of wound up doing voiceover stuff for things like Armani and Moroccan sure. oils. So it was all like, hello, welcome. <laughs> Put this in your hair. <laughs> and that, that was a paycheck, but it wasn't too exciting for me. Um, but it made and, for a good reel. Yes, exactly. exactly yeah. Yeah. But uh, Red Dead Redemption came along, and as Steve said, we, we didn't know what we were going in for. And I think what's great about when, they, when the industry kind of says it's voice acting, it really is, is like you're using your voice as a character. Um, and that was the first opportunity I got to do that in. Um, I've had a couple of opportunities since, but Molly O'Shea, the character I played, was like quite an extreme Irish personality. Um, so I think like using the voice and finding her voice was something that was, uh, was just incredibly fun and just a, a different form of acting and telling a story and telling a character's story. Um, we also did the motion capture for that, so it was, we actually physically acted too. But I think a lot of it was still um, based on the voice. Um, sure. But it was great. It's a lot of fun. You know, I hope to see some more future projects similar to that. And Daniel? Uh, for me, uh, prank phone calls. <clears throat> um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've always used my voice, I guess, to my advantage ever since I was a little kid. And uh, I, I fell into acting and theater. My uh, major in college was musical theater. And I dropped out of that and said, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on film. I really love film. And uh, from there, I was a struggling actor in the Baltimore, D.C. area uh, for most of my life. And uh, decided, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy the quick stop. So I got one of my friends and we went to Blockbuster to say, what was the movie that we didn't see at Blockbuster? And it happened to be Ninjas vs. Zombies. So I ended up producing my first movie, Ninjas vs. Zombies. Uh, so that I could act in it, and uh, yeah, so I started producing my own film so that I could facilitate that, and uh, nine, nine films later, I said, you know, I, I love voices, I love cartoon characters, I'm always doing them, I sound like a cartoon character, uh, so I started hopping around Transformer conventions, because I'm a huge Transformers fan, and uh, eventually I got a, got a role in uh, Transformers the Game, and started convention hopping and meeting 
amazing people like these folks here and uh, said, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. So I moved out to Los Angeles uh, almost six years ago, packed up my car and drove cross country, and uh, here we are. So while we—that's my got, story. I'm sticking to it. Great. Yeah. <laughs> so, and and so you're you're the voice of many things, including you know um, the the Lucky Charms uh, Leprechaun. Hey, that's correct. And um, <laughs> as you're sitting next to Penny, I just I realized She's that might be a little. Right that now. might be a it's little. How dare insensitive. you? <laughs> um, He's here. Star Scream, uh, Donald Duck. I, so you're taking some voices that have been acted by people, you know, before you and, and hopefully not after you, right? That's right. Um, it's not how, mine forever. How do you take known characters and make them your own? How do you, what's your twist on a Starscream or, you know, the Lucky Charms? I'll, I'll give you an example with Starscream, actually. Um, so when I had auditioned for this, for this amazing property, I was so smitten with Transformers, I created a comic book to send to Michael Bay and Steven Spielberg, like, please let me audition. And uh, I did, I got an audition, which was incredible, because I was in a market that was not LA, uh, not New York, and uh, had my opportunity. I didn't get it, but then Activision called me and said, hey, we want you to, we want you to try out for Starscream and a few other characters, and my response was, <laughs> uh, I think that was, I'm quoting myself exactly. Um, and uh, so they, we figured out a voice. They wanted something really demonic that would scare the kids. So I ended up with a voice that sounded very much like this. And I get to my session, and they said, um, we just want a light British accent. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, so what you're telling me is you want Starscream to sound like this. And they're like, Perfect. And my inner fan, of course, went, no, <laughs> why? And, and I said, I, I, I have to say something. Please don't fire me. Uh, can we do something else? They're like, yeah, sure. What do you got? And I'm like, uh, 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 Decepticons, this is Starscream. Yeah, that's it. All right. There we go. So in terms of picking up uh, the reins from the amazing Chris Lotta uh, from G.I. Joe and, and Transformers, Decepticons, retreat! Yeah. You know, I, I went with something completely different, and that's kind of what stuck. So I had some creative input, but it wasn't mine to begin with. It sure. was just, here, let's do this on the spot. When it comes to an existing character like Donald Duck, you just want to do the character justice. You, you want to uh, offer as much respect as possible, do your research. I, I can't tell you how many late nights I've been up watching the old Clarence Nash cartoons and practicing and looking for little tidbits that I can bring into the current iteration. But uh, over time, you, you get comfortable with the character and they become a part of you. So uh, yeah, he's a part of me. Sweet. Awesome. So Steve, um, yeah. you were on my favorite television program of all time, Deadwood. Oh uh, my goodness. And, yeah. um, I, I would love to hear just like one quick anecdote about Deadwood, if if you don't mind, and then uh, we'll open it up to the folks here. But and it is go. Deadwood was filmed uh, out in Santa Clarita mm -hmm. on the Melody Ranch, and I was uh, played one of Gerald uh, McCraney's henchmen. Uh, uh, in the in in the third season, I, I I'll say I'll say this. I mean, most of my stuff got got cut for whatever reason. I mean, like a, a snippet. But uh, I, I I would say this. I had never been on a, a whether television or film set. I had never been on a set in my life where. That that set is just legendary, and they've used it for other shows. Sure. Used, but when you're there, you are transported back in time. Every the the the, the every interior because you you look at the town and and it's like all exterior, but they also shoot in the interior. It's basically like a recreated town that they use, uh, you know, both both shots, and um, they. Folks. You know the craft services are are they'll put uh, either put a tent or they'll just put it inside one of the buildings that they're not using. So you're just surrounded uh, in costume uh, all the time, and it was just 
I had never seen anything just and just uh, and and all the 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 stars of the show were just great, um, and everything was just so just so immersive. And I think that it it really, uh, it, it it it's it as a as a performer it sees that that set just seasons you. You just it just sets. It's like sometimes they say you know sometimes you an actor will get into character when they. If, if they're more of a boisterous character and they've got a particular outfit, mm. you know, and so it's like, well, never rely too much on the outfit. Let be you. But sometimes you get that coat like Danny DeVito when he did Batman Returns in 92. And he said, once you put that coat on, he felt Penguin. And they Penguin. had him, they made him uh, an extra coat so he could just take home. <laughs> uh, but for me, it was just being on that set. And, and, and to be honest, I think there were times when... Um, uh, when I used that, when back in uh, 2009, when we started production, uh, started, uh, well, I started my work on the original Red Dead Redemption, yeah. where I used my thought process of being on the Deadwood set, Melody Ranch, oh, wow. and just like, so you're in, a, you're in a, 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 a motion capture, a performance capture volume, and you can't, phys you have to imagine it, and it's like, I can, right. and just, just remember walking down the streets of cool. the Melody Ranch property and 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 yeah it's just it it was just immersive that would be the one thing i could say about my experience there is just i i've never been on a set that was just that awesome awesome okay. so we've got i'm sure you guys have questions so let's uh let's get to them uh i just want to add one oh, thing really course. super quick um so i made a new year's resolution that i was going to play more video games and i just happened to be like eh, red dead redemption 2 and now here we are. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah, so, I, and Drops I will say guys. that I am, uh, I am never going to leave uh, Chapter 2. I'm That's where I am right now. You, you can get to Chapter 3, but I'd really stay there. No, I, I, I don't want anyone coughing I'm on me. I'm still in 2. I'm happy just riding around town on the horse and just exploring, and I don't... I, I got it spoiled. Being attacked for me by wolves. And, yeah. It's know. all good. All fun. It's all good. Did I, you know, okay, so uh, chapter, chapter 2... Is uh, is Horseshoe Overlook, mm -hmm. and so you can just. And this is not a spoiler, but if if you are a hundred percent completist and you do all the side stuff, you can actually finish more than half of the game while you're in Chapter Two. Wow! If you didn't know that, yeah. I've done it. Spoilers. And, so has, and no, 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 it's not a, I'm not giving away the plot. I'm just saying both uh, uh, Ben Davis and I have done that. We have played more than half the game, finished Got it. it. And, Anyway, just nervous. first question. Uh, for upcoming new voiceover artists, how would you say is the more common or easier way to find auditions? What was the last part of that? How do you find local auditions for up and coming for, for people who are looking to get a foot into voice acting? Well, I would say, are, are, you, are you a Stockton local here? Uh, no, I'm Tracy. Okay. I, well, what I would say is, no, this is a great thing about uh, specifically the voiceover industry, uh, where you live. You can, you can because of the, the genius of technology and, and the way smartphones are designed these days, you can literally put together your own demo reel no matter where you are. And having the ability to post it, uh, post it online is, is uh, people, w w the way technology is working now with smartphones, et cetera, uh, as, a, as, a, some, as a creator of art, as a filmmaker, what have you, as an actor, voiceover actor, however you, however you want to cut it, you have more control over your own uh, medium than, than generations before you. Uh, and there's an advantage to that. Um, I would say that, uh, uh, well, I, I mean, Daniel could add to this, you were saying you, yeah. you you decided to. You were a fan of, of Transformers, That's so right. you just made your own. I, I participated in the fan dubs, you know, of the Japanese content, and you know, cut my teeth on that kind of stuff. But realistically, it's about the relationships that you make. If there's a recording studio in your hometown or nearby, you know, uh, find find a relationship with those people. See if they need additional voices for anything, because sometimes they're like, ah, I got to find a voice for this. Who do I call? Yeah. So you want your 
your number to be the first one that they call. That's one way of doing it. The other is uh, uh, voice over IP websites like voice123.com. Yeah, yeah. Usually they'll, they'll offer a package where you have to pay to have access to certain auditions. It's a pay to play kind of thing. But when you're first getting started, I look at that as an opportunity simply to practice. Regardless of whether you get the jobs or not, this is an opportunity for you to practice and learn about yourself. When I teach workshops about voiceover, that's all I teach is you got to learn what your instrument is so you know exactly how to market it. So, you know, if you've got a wacky voice like this, you're probably not going to be doing Lexus commercials, you know. <laughs> you know, you got to know exactly what to target and go after. Um, so learning what your capabilities are, networking, uh, paying to play a little bit, I would say that would be the first jaunt into that world. How about Fiverr, something like that, where you, no? no. no. Okay. No. I mean, asked I, and answered. I, I think uh, you know Fiverr offers a, a, a very specific thing, and it's a, and it's a good service. But when it comes to voiceover, I think if you are endeavoring to to do that as a as a vocation, then it's it, it's not really worth your while to undercut your own uh, value. Sure. Any other questions? Yeah. And what's different or off, it just bugs me a lot. <laughs> How much of that is the studio or whoever directing you and telling you to do it differently? And do, do they realize they can kind of bug the people? That's a great question. Right That's a great question because I'll tell you something. It bugs me, too. <laughs> so I, I can only use my, my own example with, with... We're talking about the Muppets, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Marvel got it right with the MCU, I think, in keeping the continuity of the characters over a long period of time. Because we as fans like to see the, the voices and the people that we enjoy watching over and over and over again. So when you have an established character, you know, it's, it's important for the actor to bring their A-game. It's important for the voice director to guide them in the right direction. It's important for the writers to understand the character as well. So if one of those pieces is off, you know, maybe there's going to be a difference. Uh, there, there have been occasions where I've had to interject and say, I'm, I'm sorry, can we do this a different way? And sometimes that ends up making its way into the final product. Uh, but it's any number of things. It's any number of things. But I, I understand what you're saying completely. Yeah. Because I'm the same way. I'm like, that doesn't sound like... Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. But, to, but to the performer's credit, uh, you also can't... If someone inherits a, a certain animated voice and maybe not to your liking, some people's like, oh, that guy... That guy... I'm guilty. As I separate as someone in the business as a fan. Sometimes I'll catch myself doing that. And you have to be forgiving because it's like, perhaps they did an exact... Uh, uh, they mimicked or did it perfectly, and the d studio head director said, actually, we want to try a different direction, and they're only doing what their director directed them to do. Right. And that you have to, so it, it, it yeah, when it, it's a great question. I think it has a lot, there's a lot of powers at play. An example of that, when I did Transformers, yeah. so I, I did Starscream, and the, the uh, DS versions of the game maintain the voice actor's voice. Yeah, what you heard is what you got. Whereas the console versions, they took this voice and made it into something like this. It's like, well, <laughs> I had so no part post -production of Post-production can <laughs> post -production. play a part as well. Yeah. Yep. Uh, right. So I apologize, folks. We're, we, we're, we're out of time here. But I did have one final question. We'll just start down at the end. Where can we find you online? Oh, my goodness. Thank you for that question. Uh, you can find me everywhere online, actor Daniel Ross. I know it's a little pretentious. Actor Daniel Ross across all social media. And I have a new TikTok. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Penny? Um, yeah, just like on all social media, it's usually O Penny O'Brien. O'Brien is spelled with an E. And then I have a website, too, just www.pennyobrien.org. Um, some updates and stuff on there, because i got some cool stuff coming up next year. Not in the voice world, unfortunately, but on... Uh, Streaming services. And if you yeah. do, if you do go to her website, I, 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 I encourage you to. She has a lovely singing voice. Oh, <laughs> Penny O'Brien. 
Yeah. No? Anyway. That's then, private. Uh, all right. Never mind. Right. No, no, it's no, okay. But you should, absolutely. Just, you should visit her website. It's, it's very sweet. It's, Thank it's, you. It's very well put yeah. together as well. Steve. Uh, you can uh, follow my fan page on Facebook, uh, Steve J. Palmer uh, fans page. I'm also, uh, Instagram and Twitter handle are the same. It's Steve underscore J underscore Palmer. And, uh, yeah, we post fun pics and do fun stuff. Yeah. And, again, they're just up on the fun deck. So if, when you get a chance, go up and say hi and get a picture. And it is an a autograph. fun deck. It it's is very a, fun. It's, it's, I, I dare say hella fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks guys. You guys. Thank you so much for coming, guys. Yeah.